So you've built your very first Space Marine and you're starting to wonder about how you're going to paint this guy. After having a good look at the box art and maybe some pictures online, you're in a situation where you're starting to doubt yourself where you can paint this model that good. I too was in this situation, but what if I told you that painting your very first Ultramarine is a lot easier than you think? And today, I'm going to show you just how. One of the biggest problems with this hobby is that I tend to overthink too much, especially when it comes to painting. At the start, I get excited about painting the model, all the things I could do and what it means for the model or the army. But sure enough, quickly I start thinking, am I good enough to take what's in my mind and paint it onto this plastic figure? Painting shouldn't just be about painting, it's about creating something. I tell myself that I'm breathing life into something lifeless, and it doesn't matter if it's going to be good enough. Just get over the starting hump and enjoy the creativity of it. And that's why I created this Warhammer 101 series. Just to show that if I can paint it, you can. So let's get started with this Ultramarine. The very first thing you need to do is to base the model with a primer. This is what helps the paint stick to the model better and the paint won't start chipping off. I use a grey spray from Halfords. It's cheap for the size and it works perfectly. Then I spray them by using my high tech model holder stick and I add a bit of double sided sticky tape to hold the models down. Shake the crap out of the can and when ready head outside for the spraying. Have the models about half a foot away from the can and what you need to do is spray in blasts in a sweeping motion. Make sure to get an even coverage across the model and not to clog up any of the details. You just want to get a thin layer for the paint. While the model is drying I'm going to sort out what paints and brushes I need. The price of paints builds up over time, so I'm trying to keep it as minimum as possible. And for every painting session, you're going to need some clean water, kitchen roll, and your brush. When it comes to brushes, I just buy whatever I can get. I don't have expensive brushes or anything like that. I just build up a collection of GW and Hobby Shop ones, but for this video, I'm going to be trying the brushes from the Green Stuff World Starter Brush Set. It's a nice little set that comes with 25 disposable brushes, so there's plenty to practice with. For lighting, I'm blessed with the clear sections of the roof, so it's really bright in here with natural light. But sometimes that's not always the case when it's darker out. What I like to use is this arch LED light from Green Stuff World. It's incredibly bright and easy to set up. Other options are to get two small lamps like these from Argos, that's before they left Ireland, and use small daylight bulbs. These give you the best light as possible. The very basics of painting a model is broken down into three steps. Basing, shading and highlighting. Starting off with the main colour of the model which is going to be McCraig Blue. I like to use a wet palette, but any painting palette is okay to use. The wet palette stops the paint from drying out more. Get a bit of paint on your palette and add a small bit of water. With the right mix the paint should have a silky milkish feel to it. And honestly that's the best way I can describe it. Not too thin, not too thick, just silky. Spread it across the model as evenly as you can, making sure not to blob up in parts. A second layer can be applied once the first layer has dried. With the base coat dry, I'm going to move on to anything that's black on the model, like the parts between the armour and the weapons. Just like before, have the abandoned black tin down, and if you go over any of the blue parts, you can tidy it back up once the black is dry. For the chest emblem, the Ultramarines have theirs gold, and to do that I'm going to go with Retributor Armour and also paint it on the shoulder pads and any other emblems on the model. The silver parts of the model is then painted with lead belcher. This is the gun, the straps and the vents on his backpack. And now for one of the trickiest parts of the model, the eyes. Start off with two thin layers of Mephiston red instead of one thick layer. And don't worry about being too careful here because you can tidy up the blue straight after once it's dried. Another part that can be tricky to paint is white and on the marine shoulder pad we're going to paint the arrows with Corax white. It's important that the white is thinned down and painted with two to three thin layers. With all those parts dry, it's best to go back up and tidy any parts painted by accident. Right before we start adding the shading, I almost forgot to paint the leather belt, the pouches and the holsters. Some like to go with black for these, but I like to go with a brown leather look with Mornfang brown. With all the base coats on, it's time to add some shading in. Shading has depth to the model and slides into the recesses. They are easy to use, but they are also easy to overuse. I like to thin mine down with Lamian Medium or water, just a small bit though. Shading usually goes over all parts of the model, but for the Ultramarine, I'm going to do some recess shading. Instead of painting it all over on the flat armour, I'm just going to shade into the recessed parts with Null and Oil. This way it takes a little bit longer, but it lets you be more precise and makes the cleanup after it much easier. The metal parts can be shaded by spreading the null and oil all over it. 
but make sure not to let it pool up. If it does, just wipe your brush and let the shade soak back into the brush to remove the excess shade. For the gold and the brown leather parts, we're going to go with an Agrax Earth shade on it. This is a brown shade that works well on almost every colour, but it won't darken the gold too much like the Nullin Oil would. This model also has a grenade in his hand, so I paint that with Caliban Green. With the base colours and the shading done, the model is looking like it's tabletop ready, but to really add some finishing touches, we're going to add some edge highlights. Highlighting is what really makes the part of the model pop out. It's a bit of a long process, but worth it in the end. Once you have your Calgar Blue ready, you'll want to have just a small bit on the brush. I like to twist my brush across the palette and bring it to a fine point. Then I use the edge of the brush across the edges of the armour. This can take a lot of practice to get the edges just right, but take your time and keep your hand as steady as you can. For the leather, I go with scrag brown on the edges. I use the same technique to highlight Stormhole Silver on the gold parts and Warbrass Green on the grenade. With the model done, all that's left is the base. For this, I like to keep it simple. I scoop up some astronaut granite and spread it across the base. This doesn't need to be perfect, and I add little bits of it on the Marine's boots for greater detail. The best thing about astronaut granite is that it's very easy to use and easily transforms a plain base in minutes. Once dry, I shade it with Agrax Earthshade, and then I use a technique called dry brushing to add Dawnstone to finish it off. Dry brushing is simply adding some paint to your brush, brushing most of it off on a towel or a textured palette until it's almost gone, and then brushing it across lightly so there's just enough paint to catch the raised areas. With all that done, your Ultramarine is more than ready for the battlefield. When broken down, model painting can be an easy process to follow. Step 1, base your model. Step 2, add shading. And step 3, add your highlights in. Just take your time, tin your paints and enjoy the process. I hope this video helped and join me next time for Warhammer 101 where I show how to paint a Space Marine Blood Angel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.